Well, hey guys, today I'm gonna to be sharing with you eight of my favorite affordable, no cast sunscreens. The sunscreens in this video all are under $15. Coming in at number one is a sunscreen I discovered last year in the drugstore from Banana Boat. Protection Plus Minerals SPF 50. This is a water resistant sunscreen for the face. Banana Boat has a few sunscreens with similar packaging, but the one that specifically says for face is fragrance free, which I prefer, especially in sunscreens, anything like a moisturizer that I'm gonna leave on my skin. I go out of my way to avoid fragrance because it's irritating oftentimes, triggers a headache, and I find it aggravates facial redness, plus it's a really common allergen in skincare products. So this particular one clocks in at $10.99. They sell it in pretty much any drugstore, Target, uh, Walmart. The formula is moisturizing, it's not too shiny, too greasy. There's a little bit of a shine with it, but I personally don't mind that. It is water resistant, so it's a great option for doing sport outdoors, spending time outside, of course, provided you reapply every two hours while you are outdoors during daylight hours. Now, the other nice thing about this is that it has antioxidants. At one point in time, sunscreens with antioxidants, it came more at a premium price, but you're finding nowadays more so than ever, tons of sunscreens out there, majority of them have some type of antioxidant in them. And one of my favorites that is in, you know, it's, it's, it's in a lot of skincare products is niacinamide. I think it's a really great ingredient provided you tolerate it in sunscreens because it addresses some of the issues that arise as a result of environmental exposures, not just ultraviolet radiation, but also pollution, infrared radiation. It's anti-inflammatory and it may help cut down on lipid peroxidation. It helps fight hyperpigmentation by reducing kind of the transfer of pigment around in the, in the skin. It also is uh, helpful for redness and it really helps with skin's moisture barrier because, you know, say for example, you're outdoors in the sun. You know, we know that UV rays damage the DNA in our skin cells, they damage the collagen, but they also impair the skin barrier. Niacinamide can help to improve the production of things like ceramides in the skin. So I am really a fan of it, but I know some of you guys don't tolerate it particularly well. This also has a stable form of vitamin C, ascorbyl glucoside. You know, the issues with vitamin C, ascorbic acid namely, are that it has issues around penetration in the skin, which I would imagine are even greater of an issue when you have a product like sunscreen that it's intended to form a film on the skin's surface. So, you know, the devil's in the details there. Ascorbyl glucoside has perhaps a better chance of getting into the skin, but does it actually really work? Who knows? It may help cut down on oxidative stress. This also has tea leaf extract, which is also going to be a source of antioxidants. This sunscreen has coconut oil, which is another ingredient that I think gets misrepresented a bit. People just make these blanket statements that coconut oil will clog your pores. And I say, prove it, prove it. I don't wanna see a rabbit ear model. I don't wanna see some antiquated test methodology with a ton of limitations. Prove to me that coconut oil is comedogenic. I don't believe it. Yes, I know a lot of you guys out there find that coconut oil aggravates your acne, but that's not true across the board. If it aggravates your skin, avoid it. But I hate the blanket statement, coconut oil will clog your pores. But there is research showing that coconut oil is a beneficial moisturizing ingredient, namely for people such as myself with atopic dermatitis. Some patients with atopic dermatitis, they may decide that they don't wanna use a conventional moisturizer. Coconut oil is something that could be suggested to them that is research backed, um, albeit in small studies, for helping with dry skin and barrier issues with eczema. So I, you know, I'm a fan of it personally. It's never bothered my skin. All that to say, this sunscreen, I, I, you know, it doesn't get enough hype out there. Uh, $10.99. Now it's a, all the sunscreens in this video, they're organic sunscreens. And no, I don't mean organic as in, you know, produce grown with, you know, whatever the claim to fame regarding organic produce is today, which in and of itself is a topic for another discussion that is slightly above my scope of knowledge. I digress. Organic means organic compounds, carbon compounds, like organic chemistry. That is the correct nomenclature. People like to call them chemical sunscreens. You'll often hear me call them chemical sunscreens just because it's more of a widely recognized name in the general public. But the proper term is organic sunscreen because on the other hand, you have 
inorganic sunscreens, which people call mineral, but guess what? The minerals are chemicals. So it's just kind of a vague, in inaccurate way of calling them uh, chemical sunscreens. Anyway, um, so it's an organic sunscreen, has UV filters in it that you know allow for a broad spectrum protection. Now, some people find that these ingredients burn around the eyes. I have to say, this product tolerate it really well around the eyes. Moisturizing, great. Okay, moving on, should come as no surprise to you, but if you have not tried this yet, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. The Bondi Sands Fragrance-Free Sunscreen Lotion. Now they make one for the face and they also make one for the body. I'm here to tell you, in my experience, I've used both on my face. I find that they are exactly the same. But the body one, or the one that's not specifically marketed for face, less expensive. So go with the body one. This is real no nonsense. Organic sunscreen, again, water resistant, 80 minutes. So another great option for spending time outdoors. The aesthetics of this are remarkable in my mind. It's not shiny, it's not greasy, great base for makeup. I have nothing bad to say about this. I've gone through multiple tubes since trying it for the first time. And I love it in the summertime on my legs as well as a moisturizer and a really good sunscreen. It makes my the skin on my legs look moisturized. They look healthier, radiant, glowy. All of those aesthetic benefits of moisturizing. No niacinamide in this. So those of you who are sensitive, try Bondi Sands. All right, moving on to another no niacinamide sunscreen that I will continue to mention over and over again. You need to try it. Sell it at Target, Ulta. Black Girl Kids, $9.99 for three ounces. Marketed to kids, but honestly, it's great for adults. Great on the face, the body. Again, organic sunscreen, no white cast, no greasy residue, really great base for makeup, water resistant, so you can you know use it while you're doing sport, working out outside, being active and healthy. Super moisturizing, but not greasy. It's emollient though, so it does have a nice skin softening effect, which I find I like the aesthetics of that, personally. Makeup goes on over it just fine, if I didn't already mention that. Shea butter, jojoba seed oil, carrot seed oil. So these are plant-based emollients. Um, may have antioxidants naturally found in them. The amounts of those you know, are gonna vary depending on how those ingredients are sourced, but these are ingredients that actually are beneficial in moisturizing formulas um, for their emollient properties and, and, you know, barrier supporting aspects. ELF is a brand that has some good skincare products, kind of hits and misses in my experience, but I tried out this past year the Woe Glow sunscreen. Whoa. On like my second tube, I wanna say. I keep getting comments every time I wear this, like in a TikTok video or a YouTube short or on my YouTube video, what are you wearing on your face? I need to know. Every single time I see that comment abundantly, it's usually this e.l.f. Woe Glow sunscreen. So it's a tinted organic sunscreen. This one's not water resistant, SPF 30, going for $14, so a little more on the expensive side. What I really like about this though is A, the way it looks. B, I like the fact that it goes under makeup well. And C, I find it's a really good facial moisturizer. This is one I wear on days where, you know, I'm mostly indoors, it's cloudy out, I'm not gonna be outside working out or anything like that, because it's not water resistant. Now, this particular product comes in three shades. I do the Sunbeam shade, is that what it's called? Yeah, Sunbeam. They have Sunbeam, Sunburst, Sunlight. And while, Honestly, those shades, I haven't tried the other two, those shades might suggest to you like uh, light, medium, and deep or something. I don't know. You know, when it comes to tinted sunscreens, what you see on that little circle is not always how, how things look on the skin. I will say with the Sunbeam shade, it's not orangey, it's not too peachy, but it is a little faux tan-esque, um, if I'm being honest, which, you know, it's kind of nice. You know, if you're someone, especially who uses sunless tanners, which I'm in favor of, please use a sunless tanner. Do not actively try and get a sun tan. Do not go on a tanning bed, please, please, please. If you want to use sunless tanners, by all means. By all means, use a sunless tanner. But sunless tanners on the face, Honestly, okay, here's the thing about sunless tanners on the face, in my opinion, for whatever it's worth. Two things. First of all, a lot of people find that they aggravate their acne. Now, there's nothing about them that is comedogenic, per se, 
But you know they work by that dihydroxyacetone basically um, doing what's called the Maillard reaction, essentially glycation. But don't worry, not glycation, like, oh my god, it's gonna age my skin. Glycation, just to the top dead stuff on the surface of the skin um, that leads to melanoidin formation. Maybe something about that is irritating around the pore because some people really do find that sunless tanners do aggravate their acne. Now, a lot of sunless tanners also have heavy fragrance to mask the odor of sunless tanner. Um, the other thing about sunless tanner is that, that, that a lot of people will find they're not so fond of, is that, well, it's gonna get that, those melanoidins are gonna appear in the pore opening. If you have prominent pores, this is gonna end up looking like you have really noticeable blackheads. Not something a lot of people care for. I mean, it's not a permanent change, but there's that. And then C, the other thing is their longevity. It's kind of short-lived, right? Like, especially if you are using any kind of exfoliant regularly, retinoid, I mean, there's just not as much for them to hold onto and stick. The turnover and everything and the smoothing aspects of these ingredients, the moisturizing, it just, you know, shortens their longevity a bit. So it's a lot of reapply. Then you've got your technique. Is it gonna go on streaky? And anytime you try a sunless tanner, it's it's kind of a bit of a Russian roulette. You may end up looking like an Oompa Loompa. Um, all that to say, you know, you you may a lot of people find that they just skip the sunless tanner on their face, and then they try and make up for it with makeup, bronzer. Start with a base layer of a tinted sunscreen. You may find that you're able to start approaching the appearance of the skin that you have used the sunless tanner on, on your body. Um, so this is a great one, you know, it kind of has that glowy tint to it and kind of gives you that sun-kissed glow without the, without the primitive dimers. So I like that about it too. Um, it does have niacinamide, which again, I mentioned, I think is a good ingredient for a variety of reasons, uh, unless you're sensitive to it. Also has panthenol, which is good for the moisture barrier. It doesn't burn around the eyes for me, that can vary from person to person, fragrance-free. Here's one from Neutrogena, okay? And I, I do work with Neutrogena a fair amount, so you know there's that disclosure, but uh, the Invisible Daily Defense Sun Serum. I, um, I discovered this two years ago at this point. I love this. It is a lightweight fluid sunscreen, SPF 60, going for $14.89 for 1.7 ounces, so just at the cusp of the budget here with a $15 limit, uh, but totally worth it. I mean, SPF 60, that's great. You know, the higher the SPF, likely the better in the long run, just the nature of how people apply tend to be a little light-handed, and so the higher the SPF, the better the likelihood that you get to some meaningful amount of sun protection active ingredient on your face. And it's water resistant. It does have alcohol denaturant in it, which many people don't care for or, you know, timid about. Um, but I have to tell you that is what makes this kind of a quick absorb, non-greasy formula. It's non-drying, it's, it's not, um, you know, it's not like you get hit in the face with alcohol. It's, it's a barely, like, I, I was just going over the ingredients before sitting down to film this video, and I was like, oh, didn't even really think about that, because um, I use it all the time, and I, I don't even notice it using it. Now, the Invisible Daily Defense does have red dye in it, which doesn't bother my skin, but some people find red dyes are irritating. Also has feverfew extract, which can be anti-inflammatory. Some people are sensitive to feverfew or allergic to it. So an alternative by Neutrogena that honestly the aesthetics of and the, the protection, the water resistance, all that identical but with no fever few and no red dye is the ultra sheer moisturizing face serum. Love that one too. So, you know, that's an alternative similar just shy at $15 price point. But both of these you know, they're, they're more of a fluid, so they're really lightweight. These are great options, really great options if you have super oily skin because they're fluid, they're, you know, a thinner consistency, they don't feel heavy on the face, they have that low molecular weight alcohol which helps them to be quick absorbing um, so they don't, you know, feel heavy on the skin admixed with your sebum, and they're water resistant. As a side note, I really love La Roche-Posay sunscreens a lot. Like, they have some excellent sunscreens, but man, they are not not uh, cheap, so they don't. They didn't make the $15 cut, unfortunately. Moving on to a Japanese favorite. I mentioned this in a lot of my videos on Asian sunscreens, but this one right now, at least on Stylevana, you can get for $14.29. It's the Omi Verdeo 
UV Moisture Gel SPF 50 PA4+. Now, this technically is a hybrid sunscreen, meaning it has organic filters and an inorganic active ingredient. So it's got titanium dioxide. It also has Tinosorb S, Juvenal T150, Juvenal A+, and Octane Oxide. So the Juvenal T150, the Tinosorb, the Juvenal A+, those are filters that are not approved for use in sunscreens in the U.S. This is a Japanese sunscreen, but it's a shame that they have not, you know, gone through the hoops to get them approved yet uh, because they really, in my opinion, allow the sunscreen manufacturer to create a more aesthetically pleasing, sophisticated formula that doesn't feel as greasy or heavy on the skin. Now, in contrast to the Invisible Daily Defense I just mentioned, no low molecular weight alcohols in this. So if you are sensitive to those, you find them drying, this this you're going to you're going to be fine with and it does have a very similar lightweight fluid consistency it's marketed as a gel um, but you know it's really fast absorbing doesn't leave residue on the hairs because it has a titanium dioxide you might get a little bit of a white cast with this i i, I don't get that at all though i don't get it at all uh, this also okay so no fragrance in this it has like Job's tears, which are probably anti-inflammatory. No niacinamide in this one either, for those of you who are sensitive. One thing about this, so I, I've been recommending this sunscreen for like four or five years now, probably five years. What was it two years ago? They came out with this pump bottle, which is amazing because Japanese sunscreens in particular, always a teeny tiny bottle. This is a biggie size. Love the pump packaging. Uh, the pump packaging somehow beckons reapplication more so than the tube. I have done sponsored videos with Stalvana. They have given me a code for those videos, and I think the code is still active. It's um, INF10 Dr. Dre. Should get you 12% off of your orders. So take advantage of that if you're going to order from Stalvana. A word of warning though, it can take several months for your order to arrive, depending on what you order. I cannot do an affordable sunscreens for the face, no white cast, without talking about these two, which unfortunately may or may not be available to you depending on you know where in the US you live. Kroger Shimmer Sunscreen. Okay, this is $11 for three ounces. This is so good. Like, um, it's very moisturizing, it's tinted. It's kind of, it, it looks to me on my skin, very similar actually to the e.l.f. Woe Glow. It's SPF 40, whereas Woe Glow is SPF you have 30, so you get a little bit more there. Not water resistant like the, the Woe Glow. So this is one that you wear as a daily facial moisturizer for the days where you are, you know, mostly indoors, running errands here and there, not super sunny out. You're not spending a lot of time outside. You're not sweating a lot because it's not water resistant. This has niacinamide in it. Uh, like the Woe Glow, which I like, you know, again, good for redness, dark spots, moisture barrier, anti-aging perhaps because of the free radical scavenging effect, cutting down on lipid peroxidation. Because of that, it's also an ingredient that, you know, is helpful for people who have oily, acne-prone skin, especially if you live somewhere with a lot of pollution. That pollution, the particulate matter, leads to lipid peroxidation, aggravate not only acne, but atopic dermatitis as well. Speaking of moisture barrier, this has some natural moisturizing factors, uh, arginine, uh, which is very hydrating. Isodotacane, an ingredient I love in sunscreens, creates a quick absorbing uh, s formula that do doesn't feel greasy on the skin, but kind of almost has a pore blurring effect depending on how the product is formulated overall. Love this two bits. Try it out. I mean, it's inexpensive, fragrance-free. All of these are fragrance-free, by the way. I don't, I don't, like I said at the beginning, I don't like fragrance in a sunscreen. Last but not least, we have one that comes and goes, all right? They, they put it out, it gets sold. You may or may not see it again for some time, then it reappears, okay? It's, 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 it's a unicorn, and that is, the Trader Joe's Daily Facial Sunscreen SPF 40. Now this one's water resistant 40 minutes. Um, so a good option for, you know, summer months when you're sweating, if you're doing stuff outdoors. $8.99 for 1.7 ounces. No niacinamide. Has that isodotasane. When it comes out of the tube, completely clear, completely colorless. This is an organic sunscreen. There is no white cast with this. I mean, there's no, there's, there's no white 
at all to this formula. There's no white, there's no yellow, there's no, there's, it's completely colorless, clear colorless. Um, goes on like a dream. Very similar in texture and consistency to Supergoop's uh, Unseen Sunscreen, which I also love, but is not making the cut as far as price point. Doesn't burn around the eyes, doesn't sting. Moisturizing, not greasy, a great option if you have oily skin because it's, it's, it's mostly silicon-based. Uh, it has dimethicone, it has that isodotecane. You really do get a nice pore blurring, smoothing effect. Keeps the skin soft, hydrated. Forget you even have it on and, and it goes on really well. So those are the eight affordable, no white cast sunscreens, um, under $15. Hopefully there is something in this video that you have available to you that you can try out because sunscreen is the most important aspect of your skincare routine. I mean, it really has the most research behind it of anything you could buy in the store and put on your skin for keeping your skin healthy long-term. It has multiple functions. You know, like I said, a lot of these sunscreens, in addition to having the UV protection, which they're intended for, they also have other ingredients that may potentially have beneficial outcomes to your skin like niacinamide, um, ascorbyl glucoside, uh, Job's tears, they have some anti-inflammatory effects. And let's not forget, sunscreens are in a moisturizing base. So not only do the active sun protection ingredients help, of course, protect against DNA damage, they help protect your moisture barrier, so it helps keep moisture in your skin better. But then the base is also helping to keep moisture in the skin because it reduces water loss and helps with improving the maintenance of hydration in skin's outermost layer. So these things together, with consistent use of wearing sunscreen, you get the effect of skin that, you know, kind of does what it's supposed to do a lot more on, on task, um, like naturally exfoliating properly, smooth, less irritation prone because barrier function is you know optimized because of the water retention those enzymes in the skin are jiving and thriving hopefully there was a sunscreen in this video that you know is available to you that you could try out if you are struggling to find a no cast sunscreen that does not break the bank i hope you guys enjoyed this video on the end slate i'm going to put my recent video on affordable dry skin care Okay, if you have dry skin and you're on a budget, check that out um, because I give lots of recommendations in that video. If you guys enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.